Greenville, South Carolina, one of the nation's best cities on the rise, one of the South's best cities, and according to People Magazine, one of the best foodie towns in all of the United States. There's a number of reasons that you should call Greenville, South Carolina your next home. And specifically in this video, we are going to be talking about the pros and cons of living in downtown Greenville and why you should consider calling downtown Greenville your next home. And at the end of the video, be sure to stick around because we're gonna talk about real estate prices and real estate trends and what I'm predicting is gonna happen in downtown Greenville in the near future. Let's do it. As always, my friends, my name is Will Sawyer, your friend in real estate here in the upstate of South Carolina. And it's our goal with this channel that we are your number one resource for all the things that you need to know about your relocation to downtown Greenville, South Carolina. We hope to provide you with the most accurate, the most reliable, and the most relevant information you can find on the internet. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and follow along for future videos. So first up, let's talk about the pros of living in downtown Greenville. And if you've done any level of research up to this point, possibly watching other videos on our channel where we've dived in about the pros and cons of living in Greenville in general, about things to consider before moving to Greenville, you've probably heard me say some of this, but we're gonna offer some new advice and new information that's hopefully gonna be really, really helpful for you. So first up, let's talk about amenities in downtown Greenville. So. The hallmark staple of downtown Greenville is Falls Park. If you're looking or wanting to buy a home in downtown Greenville, you're gonna be thinking about how quickly you can walk or ride your golf cart to Falls Park because that's where downtown essentially starts. So Greenville, South Carolina used to be the textile capital of the world. And in the latter 20th century, when textiles started going overseas, Greenville kind of lost its life. And in the 90s, Michelin USA relocated here and followed it was BMW USA. And that reinvigorated the life here in the upstate. And at that time, Main Street used to be a four lane road. So the city cut off the exterior lanes, made those parking spaces. And then you started to see businesses coming back to Main Street. The points at hotel used to be a squatter's house. Weston bought it, reinvigorated it, and it really started to change the look and the landscape of downtown Greenville. The Liberty Bridge came to Falls Park in 2003, and for whatever reason, people started to notice Greenville, South Carolina. So restaurants have flooded into downtown Greenville, naming it one of the best foodie cities in the entire country. One of our favorite restaurants is Between the Trees. So living downtown, you're able to walk to all of these restaurants, for instance, Between the Trees, Scoundrel, which the chef that started Scoundrel left a Michelin star restaurant to come and plant roots here in downtown Greenville. There's over 20 breweries here in Greenville because Greenville has such clean water. Our water sources are coming out of the Blue Ridge Mountains. And in addition to restaurants and breweries, there's a number of craft cocktail bars like Coral, like Juniper, like Neat Bourbon Bar, and so on and so forth. So not only if you live downtown will you have access to a number of restaurants, a number of breweries, a number of craft and cocktail bars, you'll also have access to entertainment amenities like the Peace Center, which is host to a number of Broadway shows throughout the year in addition to concerts and big comedy shows. There's a number of touring artists that come through the Peace Center every year for entertainment for you to enjoy. And that leads me to my next point, which is all of the events that Greenville hosts throughout the year. So right now we are hosting Euphoria, which is one of the biggest wine, food, and music festivals in South Carolina throughout the year. This festival benefits over 40 local charities. This festival has been going on for a number of years, so local and out-of-state chefs will come into Greenville and will host these large food and wine and cocktail tastings that benefit a number of charities here locally. So not only is there euphoria every year, Greenville's biggest event every October is called Fall for Greenville. And yeah, it's kind of punny, but a lot of folks from out of town, a lot of my clients come into town on this weekend to really get a great feel for the full swing of fall at Fall for Greenville. This is where they shut down Main Street. A number of vendors are lined on both sides of Main Street, there's about six or seven concert stages on various streets around downtown. 
and it is a huge, huge food and music festival. And then last but not least on our big events is Artisphere, which has been named one of the best art festivals in the entire country, hosted right here in Greenville every spring. Now this is where over a hundred artists from around the world will come and post up their tents on Main Street and sell their art, display their art. And this is where a number of visitors come in from out of town, say from Asheville or from Charlotte or Charleston or Atlanta, and spend a weekend here in Greenville walking down Main Street, looking at all the great art. And then finally, our smaller micro events are Noma Square. There's Thursday Night Alive every Thursday night during the summer. And then every Saturday during the summer, we have the TD Saturday Market, which is the local farmer's market on Main Street in downtown Greenville. So the last pro I think about living in downtown Greenville is the vibrancy and the future of Greenville. I think if you invest your money in downtown Greenville, that is a worthwhile investment. There are a number of commercial, retail, and residential developments going on in downtown Greenville right now that is only gonna make this city much more attractive. We just talked about it in one of our past videos. So projects like Gateway Greenville, which is gonna bring hundreds of residential units and a lot of commercial space for new businesses to come into Greenville. We're talking about the County Square project, which is gonna bring over 1,500 residential units into downtown Greenville and a number of commercial tenants, including the Anchor tenant, which is gonna be Whole Foods. And don't let me forget True Line Greenville, which the founder of the House of Blues is bringing this new concept into Greenville. It's gonna be a very cool music venue in downtown Greenville. And not to mention the Peace Center is undergoing a big renovation right now to increase its square footage and introduce multiple new venues, including a music recording studio and a place for touring artists to stay when they perform. So it can't be all glitz and glam. Let's talk about the cons of living in downtown Greenville. First up is gonna be traffic. In the past six years since I moved to Greenville, traffic has gotten worse in downtown, especially around rush hour, not necessarily on the weekends or throughout the day. You can still get through downtown pretty easily, but at rush hour in the mornings and in the evenings, it's pretty bad. Now, if you're coming from a big metro like Charlotte or Chicago or New York, or somewhere out west, you're gonna laugh at what we consider traffic. However, I would say commute times have probably increased about five to 15 minutes over that past six year period. And the second con about living in downtown Greenville, in my opinion, would be the noise level. So the city has created a noise ordinance for people who are driving downtown. So you don't hear a lot of folks driving down Main Street rev their engines anymore unless they wanna get slapped with a big fine. So that's been alleviated. However, you do have your major corridors like Academy Street and South Church Street that are gonna be full of traffic at all times of the day just by nature of where they feed to and where they come from. So if you're coming into downtown Greenville off at 385, you're either gonna turn left onto South Church Street or you're probably gonna turn left onto Academy Street. So you just have a ton of traffic and there's a number of apartment complexes. There's a number of townhome and condo developments that are being built right here in this corridor. So if you decide to buy a property in one of these locations at nighttime, you might have to deal with some residual noise as you try to sleep, especially centered around those major events that we mentioned previously in the video. You will have to deal with a number of out of town traffic, a number of out of town folks coming in on a weekly basis, especially a quarterly basis when we're having these big events. Main Street gets shut down, traffic gets backed up, and it can be kind of rough if you're living in downtown Greenville. So last but not least, let's talk about real estate and some trends that I think we're gonna see in downtown Greenville in the coming years. So in the last six months, about 73 single family homes have sold in downtown Greenville for an average of roughly $750,000. The average size of these single family homes is about 2,000 square feet. And in that same time period, about 10 condos have sold for an average of about $614,000 at an average of about 1,300 square feet. And for townhomes, about 18 have sold in the previous six months for about an average of $690,000. So as far as trends go in downtown Greenville over the next few years, you know, the city's really putting a lot of emphasis and focus on density and housing density. So we're not seeing a lot of single family, big scale developments. 
However, what we are seeing is folks that are buying, say, a parcel of land, splitting that into two to four parcels, and then you'll see two to four new single family homes being built right beside each other. But as far as bigger developments, you know, 10 plus units go, that's more on the townhome or condo side. There's a number of townhome developments and condo developments that have sprouted up over the city over the last three years. And I think that's what we're gonna continue to see more of versus single family developments. So if you are a buyer and you're thinking about living in downtown Greenville, I hope that information was helpful. If you are thinking about relocating to Greenville by the end of the year here in 2024 or in 2025, do me a favor, email me on my email below or shoot me a text at my cell phone number below. I would love to chat with you more about what living in downtown Greenville could be like for you and possibly your family. So until next time, my name is Will Sawyer, your friend in real estate. Stay safe. Well, this video is gonna be a about Greenville County, the upstate of South Carolina. Great thing to do and easily in the evening. I'm a local real estate expert here in the area. All the time, you know, we're right behind me is a really cool place called Freight Yard.